welcome to everybody here we would be covering the advanced printing we have we would have already seen the reports the creation of the reports the displays of the reports now coming to the printing of those reports or the invoices that we have learned about so uh, talking about the printing printing uh, well, as well as uh, how a businessman requires various reports to be viewed, he also requires uh, to print the same reports in different formats. So, Tally gives the flexibility to print the same kind of report in different formats, as well as uh, the same report in different format itself. So, you can print the report as seen on the screen as well as you can print the report different format from what you see on the screen or both ways so uh, this uh, printing action can be initiated from a menu definition or a button definition menu definition we have two actions uh, print and print collection and button we have print and print report Menu action, print or print collection, finally enters a report in a print mode. At menu, you can say add key item. Uh, well, the syntax at the menu definition is the same as you have for the display. The only difference would be the action name. So if it's a print collection, uh, then it has to be a name of a collection. And if it's a print action then it has to be a name of a report then at button level uh, the action is print report now this is where we have an additional spice to it uh, well depending upon the kind of uh, report you want to generate is what we do uh, is what you want to get printed uh, for example a print report action uh, basically prints the current report so uh, it looks for a report uh, it looks for a uh, print action at your form level a print attribute at your form level and in case the print uh, action is not uh, the attribute print is not available at the form definition it prints the current report as it as it is well, uh, we have a little change here. Uh, as you can see, uh, optionally, you can pr provide a report name. And, uh, well, there is an additional logical parameter. Uh, this logical parameter sets or allows you to hide or unhide the configuration of the print hide and unhide the configuration of the print oh, well uh, just let me show this into tally any report you print in tally so display day book and alt p this is the configuration screen so the alt p button that we have here goes for printing the current day book well uh, in default tally everywhere you see this configuration screen is available however as per the customer need the customer may not want to see the screen but the action print report would accept this logical value only if you give the report name uh, well we have a common button everywhere for alt p print or you go to trial balance and we have the same print button so it is highly impossible to create multiple print buttons for each report hence we had a common button action print report now with the enhanced behavior of this logical parameter the report main name is mandatory to overcome these kind of circumstances where we do not want to create multiple report a uh, multiple print button we can use a syntax dot which means current report so if 
at the form level print attribute is mentioned it will print that particular report or it will print the current report so this is how it works at the form definition we have a button button name and the report name uh, if the PA button is clicked then the trial balance goes for print and if the current report is print then the balance sheet this particular report is printed so at form definition you can print colon the print this is the report name and the button print button so the moment you click on the print button it goes for a print rep report for printing in absence of print attribute here it will go for the printing of this particular report can we have multiple forms yes you can have multiple forms so you can add new prints to the existing forms to get whatever you require to get printed so let me just show you one report that we have here yeah. print report action uh, we select and we say print place lips and when you go for print preview one two three selected ledger uh, selected employees Pay slips are getting printed and print action legends. Uh, say we select this and we go for a print preview and this gets printed. Right? Uh, so, this is how the printing works here. We have one print button and you can keep adding new forms to it. You can remove the existing form and add. So the attribute that you can use at form definition of your display report is the print attribute which accepts a name of a report. This report is what will get printed when you click on print. In absence of this print attribute, whatever current display report you have will get printed. You can have multiple reports for printing. Print action at button level takes multiple parameters. So action colon print report. So let us just write a small code on it. So let us just see this example. Here, when we click on this print button, the current report gets printed. Uh, well, uh, what we would do is, uh, we would hide this current configuration screen. Uh, well, but to hide this current configuration screen, uh, we will we will have to ensure that all the variables related to uh, the printer is set uh, before the printing takes place. So what we have done is on the button click, we have called an uh, we have called an action uh, the button. And in this function, we have print report, uh, current report. And currently, we have uh, commented this. We just uncomment the true. So, now, moment we refresh this and we click on print, it will go for the printing. Uh, right now, uh, for me, it is not going for printing because the printer is not being connected. Uh, and you will not even be able to uh, you notice that the configuration is not made available. The gray color screen that we had before we get into the preview is not coming now. We are directly jumping to the preview. Uh, well, because uh, the preview variable has been set to yes, is why we are getting the preview.
Yeah, yeah. So, well, but uh, every printing requires an important task. And that is the page breaks. That is very important for every printing. So we just understand the page breaks, what kind of page breaks are available, how you can give page breaks, and then we'll see the examples. So page breaks is a point at which the page should terminate and the other page should start. Uh, we do not have page breaks when we have a report in a display mode because it's just a screen that will have to flow. However, when it comes to printing, we have a specific paper size that could be the A4 or the letter or the A3 or customized, whatever. So, uh, all uh, when we are going into printing and there could be a possibility of multiple pages, we need page break to uh, make the program understand where the page will end and where the second page will begin. So, the page break indicates that the that has what is the closing the closing identifier for the current page and the opening identifier for the second page and we can have a page break for vertical and horizontal both vertical well 90% of the reports would be a, uh, would require a vertical page break in cases where we have columnar reports is where we will require horizontal page breaks so uh, vertical page breaks can be given at the form level and the parts level. So if you're giving a page break at form level, it accepts a name of parts. And if you give a part at parts level, it accepts the name of lines. And an obvious thing, uh, it's a horizontal page break. So you will have to give a page break at line level, which will consider to be the name of the fields. So, when a report is more than a single page to be printed, vertical pages are needed. Page breaks can be defined both at the form level and at the part level, depending upon the requirement of the report. So, page break first will be the closing break and then will be the opening break. The sequence wire is first closing and opening is when the first page is being printed it does not the system does not need to know the opening uh, opening of it because it, it, it knows the first part will be printed. Uh, well uh, in a similar case when uh, the form is first getting closed, where it is stopped, is where the closing break is required first. So the sequence will always be maintained. It will be the closing page break first and then the opening page break. At any definition, you name it at form level, it be at the far part level or it be at the line level. The only difference would be when you give a parts level page break, this would be the name of the lines. And when you give a page break at form level, these would be the name of a part. Similarly, for horizontal, these would be the name of the fields. So closing, closing field and opening field. This is required when there are multiple parts to be run. Uh, you would have noticed in your tally report, uh, when you go to an... Uh, auto auto column report specifically uh, say display accounts book uh, sales register auto column say four week a month so now I will change the period to April 2014 so and auto column, we make it as yearly. Right. So we have some n number of columns. Now when we press an Alt P here and look at the pre preview, you will see we have uh, pa page one of one, part one of fifteen. And at the top, you see it's page one A. Then we have page 1B, then we have page 1C. This is the right hand scrolling that we are doing. It's a page 1D. So all the things are getting printed horizontally because we have more number of 
columns. So this uh, horizontal page break is nothing but the field level page break that we need to be printed. And you notice that the particulars were getting printed on every page that is the opening page breaks. Uh, well, another thing you would have noticed here, uh, we'll just change the period once again. Uh, I'll have to April 2005, 14, and uh, sorry, the last date of entry is Feb 2015. Sales register, and we go for an Alt P, a regular print. You can see. At the end of the page, it is continued. Next page, the beginning has the company name, the period, the report name, and the page number. Again, at the bottom, it has carried over and continued written. Again, it has the next page, it has the opening, and the last page does not have continued. This is auto controlled that the opening page break would not come on the first page, and the closing break will not come on the last page. It is auto controlled, so there is no serial code that as a developer you would require to write. Right? And uh, so uh, we'll just have a quick look at these codes reports so first i'll show the form level page break that we have here yeah you see at the bottom we have continued on every page right and but the last page we do not have so this is the code for it So again, this report would be just like in any other display report for your printing. The difference would be only the difference that you would be having is the page break. Page break attribute gets active only when the report is in a print mode. So uh, you do not have to write a separate report that you, I do not want to use this attribute when it is in display mode. It will be ignored when it is in display mode and it will be active when it is in print mode or in export mode. Right? So the page break, closing page break goes for a part. Here, uh, DSPCL page break. Just go for this particular part. This is the default uh, page break available in default code. What this is what we have used, and it has a line DSP continued line, and the line is this is what would be written at the bottom of the for of all the pages but the last and then we have another part level another form level page break which will give me the company name the company address the report title and the title uh, form page break this will keep on happening till it goes to the last page, right? Yeah. Now talking about the uh, for part level page break. Yeah. So this is the farm level and this is the part level. At part level, uh, generally at invoices is where we have the part level page breaks uh, because you have a lot of content on your invoices. 
Uh, let me just show you one of the default invoices display date book and we go for this alt p and you take a preview here uh, see generally uh, here we do not have much details here uh, this is the entire form however for every description of goods you require a break here right for continue or whatsoever you need so this is where your uh, part level page break comes into picture where you will be providing your line level page break and this is what we have also showcased in our sample part level page break measure ways You see this carried over total. This is the page break that we have provided at all pages. So you will see first there is a closing page break. So this closing page break. Has nothing but carried over total of parts. So that is what generally customer needs that uh, when there's a huge report and the printing is splitting over at every page end it requires a total and on the last page it requires a grand total right so this will give me a total on every page and then we can have a bottom part or something to have the last uh, grand total and talking about the opening page break that we have here you see every page has the company name address and the report name and the period so you can see that yeah you see it says bot forward So this is the previous balance that we have. So this is the form level page break. This is the part level page break. And again, if you have a columnar report, you can have a uh, field, a line level page break. And uh, for the print one important thing this is my button where we are printing a report and you can provide a scope to your button for printing that you would like to print a report of only the selected lines so that's the payslip that you're going to print of only those employees that you need to uh, print this report requires an attribute called collection and this collection it would be nothing but data source report selected lines that's the catch the entire catch of your payslip printing that you would like to print only of the selected employees button should have a scope of selected lines action print report should have the report name report name the report should have the collection name and this collection should be data source report selected lines well the rest of the things gets printed as uh, mentioned in the report when we are using some default available report to do the entire job the entire catch is about this collection the scope of selected lines and this collection data source here this is how this entire payslip report is getting printed And print action ledgers. Uh, well, I don't think we need to explain that in detail. Uh, here, this is what it is. Simply, here's the action print collection. And when you go to this collection, you can select your ledger and you can directly go for prints. 
So that's for what we have for page breaks and prints and collections. Well, there are certain frequently used things that you would require. However, in the current business scenarios, it is important to print company logos. So this is where printing of images came into being. Uh, we started with this uh, particular capability uh, from release 3.0. Prior to release 3.0, uh, developers have achieved this uh, image printing as logo by creating a new font type and associating the uh, image to a character and then further using it. A lot of uh, uh, juggling things to be done and then pushed into it. Well, it had a lot of restrictions when it couldn't be it couldn't be colored uh, and it had to be of a specific height and width uh, due to which uh, a lot of uh, the image used to lose its standard so uh, in tally rp9 the graph type attribute at part definition itself and the and an a new attribute image has been introduced at part definition in release 3.0 for printing an image in a report. Does this mean we cannot display an image? Uh, we can display an image, but particularly this is uh, lo uh, the images are nothing but, but, but logos that usually people print with their sales invoices or probably with their reports. Hence, it has been covered as a part of your printing techniques. So, uh, when we talk about the graph type attribute, we have seen in the reports. Uh, where we are uh, where we are displaying a graph bar at the bottom of a report where we are specifying graph type colon yes apart from that uh, you can provide a path to your image which could be a bitmap or jpg in case your image of age is of any other extension then this uh, then the image is considered to be a bitmap format and uh, the part containing the graph type uh, that we have seen earlier cannot contain anything apart from this uh, image so even even though you have to uh, well it's a part so it should have a line and a field well but this field uh, set as would be an empty field it would be like a dummy field the con it cannot display a content of this field so uh, although you do not display anything yet you will have to provide the definition of this uh, the entire hierarchy and the graph type you will have to provide and the entire path to the image and this image has to be of type BMP or JPG. If it is of neither of the types, it will be assumed to be a JPG. That is what we will be trying to print. Uh, you also need to ensure that the part height and width is a, a portion appropriately as per the image size to be printed. So if you are not sure about the image size, the dimensions, the height and the width of the image, you can just check in uh, uh, any of the editors of the uh, images like the paint or a paint or Picasso and uh, just check with the height and the width. Accordingly, you will give the height and width to your part. So the syntax is very simple. Part colon the part definition name graph type colon the path to the image now there was a little restriction to this one image has to be physically present in your hard disk two it has to be a bmp or a jpg file what if there's an image somewhere on my windows that i need to get need or i, I would like to print or i would like to show for this is why the image attribute came into existence. The image attribute accepts a definition name as its parameter and the definition type is resource. And you provide an entire details of your image into this resource definition type. 
So an image attribute accepts a resource name that is the definition name and the definition type is resource. Resource definition allows you to capture images, icons, and cursors, and the cursors from your hard disk, from an FTP, from an HTTP, or even from a DLL or an EXT if these are an open sources. It can support BMP, JPG, icon, and cursor formats. Currently, the image is only supported in print and display mode, both. Uh, the default definition type, definition name, uh, you require uh, attributes like source, that is the path to the image, resource, uh, the name of the resource and the DLL or the EXT path, and the type of the resource, whether it's a BMP file, JPG file, whether it's an icon or it's a cursor. Yeah, you need to remember one thing very clearly. When the report is exported in a PDF format, PDF only supports BMP and JPG. Other file formats will not be supported by PDF. So let's have a little understanding on the resource attribute. As I, as we mentioned earlier, source attribute is nothing but specify the image path, like how you specify for your local path. You say C drive slash the path. You need to specify the path that whether it's in the local hard disk or it's on an HTTP or an FTP, wherever available. So this is where we have mentioned where it, here we understand there is a C drive local hard disk. There is a file called tally.bmp. Resource allows you to fetch an image from an exe or a DLL. Source allows you to fetch an image from local hard disk or an HTTP or an FTP. Resource allows you to fetch an image from an EXE or a DLL. This is an, uh, the name of the resource can be a string expression which evaluates to the name of the resource and DLL or the, or the EXE name with the path which can be a string which evaluates the complete DLL EXE path. So let us just show you this in tally. What's new? Release 3.0 image capabilities. And here. Yeah. So we have images, uh, you see here we can print an image, this is an image of a BMP type, this is a JPG image that we have used at graph type, resource type BMP image, resource type JPG image, resource type icon, resource type cursor, so all this is what we have been able to get from the existing uh, well this is how we have shown uh, we'll go to the resource type so resource is from my local system in the image folder this is the icon number that is available and the resource type is an icon you know, see the resource type is important to be mentioned uh, similarly, we can see for cursor, we also have a cursor, type is cursor, you see, this is a cursor, your code, arrow. The attribute resource type is mandatory. To understand what would be the resource type, whether it's a BMP or an icon or what. 
so uh, you can use the resource type uh, the resource attribute again as we specified depends upon what you pass as your parameters in the resource the name of the resource and the DN on the exe path so when I say title icon and we do not pass any path it understands that this icon is available in the existing tally application folder in case it is not available in the application folder you will have to mention the entire path of that particular resource the resource type allows you to specify the type of the resource this can be any standard windows image which can be of type bitmap, icon, cursor, or jpg. Uh, please note that the resource type has to be mentioned properly while loading the image. The resource type is mandatory and must be specified for all the sources, whether it's a source or whether it's a resource. If not specified by default, it will be of type bitmap and as everybody knows, a bitmap image is a very uh, huge file to be loaded and this might slow down your application for utility or specifically when it's a huge report to be getting printed or a lot of invoices that you need to get printed. So please be very careful on mentioning the resource type. This is an example of it. Now there are certain attributes which are related specifically to printing and these attributes will come into action only when a report is in the print mode as we just saw about the trade breaks. We have something called as print set attribute and report definition and it's a dual list attribute. It is used to set a variable value for a report in a print mode and the title a print set variable name and the value uh, see generally when we provide a set attribute it changes the variable name for when it is in the print uh, when it is in the display mode when we want to change the variable value only when it is in a print mode you can make use of the attribute print set that means while printing set the variable name this is the variable value to so you can have a different title for the uh, report when you display and for printing display. Later on, you can change whatever you require. This is the configuration screen of this print. So attribute print, at report definition of the print report. So there is one display report. In this display report, at form level you give a print attribute it is takes a it takes a report name this report to gets printed when you provide a report when you provide a print attribute at this report to this print goes for the configuration screen this that report is for the configuration screen so this is the print report and the print attribute here so the print attribute at form level go, uh, goes for the printing of that report and print attribute at report level goes for the configuration screen of the current report right then we have the attribute preprinted or preprinted border means the same uh, which takes logical parameters yes or no this is in general requirement when uh, there's a pre-printed invoices so when you are viewing it definitely you require you might require borders well if you have a pre-printed invoice you do not you might not require a uh, pre-printed border so when you say pre-printed yes that means the border exists so the borders that you have provided for your definitions will be ignored and this can be specified wherever you can specify borders like the path line and the feed then print after save this attribute is used at form definition uh, whether the form has to be printed immediately after this after saving uh, 90 percent of the cases as soon as you pass a sales invoice the sale 
uh, voucher needs to be printed. So this is what this attribute can be used for. So if you set this attribute value to yes, then as soon as the uh, report is saved, it will prompt you for the print. Then there's an attribute called next page. Um, this is a line level attribute and again accepts a logical formula. Uh, in certain cases where the balance lines are less than one or two, still in the invoice, say an invoice is of 22 lines. Uh, first page it uh, tries to adjust 10, next page 10 and for third page, specifically for third page, the entire page gets wasted for two lines. Uh, when uh, we can see if it's a nine uh, for on a side with the font height nine and you try to add two more lines it might just put the font height to nine eight but would be still readable so uh, there's a logical formula that you can provide that only move to the next page if the current pending lines is say more than two then only then what would happen is this could be saving of pages or you know you can also validate if it is a last uh, offset and there are no further lines to be printed it's better to get print on the on the current page rather than going for the next page so next page it takes a logical parameter uh, so if the condition is true then only it goes to the next page so this is an example, uh, pre, uh, this is my POS invoice, print, pause, invoice, print, and print after save, yes. Attribute DMP mode, uh, most of the time now people have laser printers where there are certain customers or users still having a dot matrix printer. Uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, attribute uh, well this kind of styling that we can give in the laser uh, will definitely fail in most of the cases of the uh, uh, dot matrix mode so you can specify the attribute DMP mode and provide your stylings that you want in case the customer is using a dot matrix uh, printer and uh, this particular attribute can be used as form path line and field uh, it can take the values as normal, bold, italics, undermined, condensed, enlarged, and double lined. So, based on how your customer needs and how you would like to fit your content into this particular report, is what you would be providing as your DMP mode string. So, the attribute is DMP mode, and these are the values that are allowed. Then we have the print BG. Uh, uh, ninety percent, uh, ninety-nine percent of the cases, uh, 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 the background color that you have in for display is not required for printing, so it is always ignored. However, in case you would like, if you have a color printer and you would like to print your report uh, with a background color, then you can provide a print BG. Uh, the print VG attribute again can be used at form, path, and field wherever background is allowed. Print VG is allowed. Well, this will work only in case where you have colored printers. Similarly, uh, the way we have for background printing, we also have for font printing. So, in generally, people print uh, the font in black. However, if required, you can change the font colors while printing by giving the print FG at your uh, font. By using print FG at border definition, you can change the color of the border while printing. Then there are functions related to printing dollar dollar part number so it's a part a part b so this is what we require specifically uh, for column reports horizontal parts 
Then download a page number requiring 80% of your reports, which runs into more than one page. Returns the page number, the current page number. And since it's a numeric, we are converting it to a string for just concatenating the values. Dollar dollar DMP mode to check whether uh, the uh, printing, whether the current printing format is uh, no dot matrix mode or not. So this is what uh, how it identifies. You go to say just need a book alt p. Here uh, we have uh, the option for print format. Here, so if you select a dot matrix format, so this function identifies whether you have selected dot matrix format or not. If it returns true. Format selected for printing in dot matrix mode, else it will return fox. So just for checking, you might decrease the size if it is in a dot matrix mode, or you might enable something, or you might just disable something, or you might just delete the printing background, whatever you just. In draft mode, uh, well again it checks whether it is in a quick draft mode, in scenarios of a quick draft mode. So this is how you might again change the width or something, you know, the text or the width of this particular uh, mode in case you require, in case you just need it. In pixel mode, it checks if it is if the selected print format is a neat mode or not. The function returns true if the report is in a neat mode. In pixel mode, the function checks whether the print format is in neat mode or not. It returns to if you have selected neat mode while you are provided printing here. Uh, uh, generally, we have provided an option for a print preview only if it is in a neat mode or a uh, draft mode. So this is one of the utility we have done in default. So in pixel mode is a neat mode, in draft mode is a quick draft mode, and it's, uh, in BMP mode is nothing but the dot matrix mode. Then the print preview. In preview mode, the function in preview mode checks whether the uh, preview mode for the report is on or not. Uh, well, this could be required, uh, could be used where you would like to, where users would like to control the printing of a report that if it is into preview mode uh, do not update values or you know, send an intimation that somebody has changed the preview mode or somebody has changed the settings so this preview mode just validates whether the print preview mode is on or not in case the action created using the uh, function this is triggered only if it is in a print mode and not the preview mode so if uh, the report goes into the preview mode it does not trigger the action only after the report goes into the print mode the action will be triggered then we have the print mode similarly if it is in a print mode you can trigger other set of actions is multi-page print job checks if the printing span across uh, multiple pages that is that does it go for more than one page if yes make certain things active and make certain things inactive so uh, so i say if it's a first page and you do not want to print the page number just make the field invisible last of set checks if the current printing page is the last page being printed if it is if it is the last page it returns true as returns false and this could be used when you are um, say at the last page somewhere you want to show the show another part where you say thank you for you know thank you for shopping with us or you can also one of the examples that we have used is for the next page and uh, use it along with the next page attribute where we're checking if it's the last set of page and the line number is like just one or two you know the, just go ahead printing on the next page do explosion fit uh, in case uh, you are printing a report which has exploded lines 
and uh, uh, it looks very uh, a very obvious awkward thing that you have a main line on page one and the exploded part goes to page two so this function uh, checks whether the exploded part can fit with the uh, within the current page if not even the main line gets moved to the next page which looks much much better than what we have so if it does not, if the explosion does not fit, then just move to the next page for this line. Balance lines, this is to check the balance number of lines in the repeated lines, which includes the exploded part lines. So you may have 10 main lines, but uh, each main line can have one or two exploded lines. So this balance lines even checks those lines. Printer info function helps us to extract the settings information of the installed printer. Uh, it is useful to get the information of the printer based on which we can determine the dimensions and the pre-printed invoice, whether it will go for a pre-print. See, a, a, a company has a multiple printers. So, uh, say if it is printer A, it should always go for pre-printed. Say it's printer B, it should always go for check printing. Printer C, it has to go for a plain paper. So basically, printer and four will help us to get whatever the required uh, dimensions and things we require. So printer and four, printer name and the information type that we need. Permissible information types are like print size and inches and left margins. The usual list of information types. Uh, suggested is we have the PDF file. Please go through the PDF file for each detailed information types that are allowed. This is an example that we have provided here. The printer name is HP Laser Chat 4250 PCL, and I want the print size in inches. So that's what I have written. Function is first child in next page this function checks whether the child object is printed on the next page and its parent object is on the current page uh, similar to the balance check or do the explosion fits if the child if the first child object that's the exploded part object is on the current page then it should not uh, then uh, the printing should not happen with the current one it should just move to the next page. This function is specifically used at the attribute next page of the line definition to print the parent in the same page as its first child. And printer exists. The function just checks whether there is any, any, just any printer installed on the current system or not. So you can provide uh, respective uh, messages that or probably you can provide respective actions that the printer does not exist. So you are just exporting the report in a PDF format or something like that. Is internet active? It just determines whether the internet is, internet is connected, currently connected or not. Uh, well, based on this particular function, uh, the other actions can be, uh, you know, the further operations like the upload or email or other things can be performed. So, is internet active? Uh, this function uh, can be used within a function where you will return a, a required message that if the internet is not active, you provide a message that the internet is not connected, please connect your internet. And if internet is connected, just perform the action. Well, this is very helpful and you can terminate other actions and internet, internet is not connected. Otherwise, you know, when you are trying to email something and the internet is not connected, it just uh, bounces back uh, your emails. Variables related to printing. Uh, SP print orientation very important. This will help us to uh, identify whether the printing should be done in a portrait or a landscape. Well, you can just define whether you the you know the particular form that you need 
or you want uh, in a portrait or a landscape so whenever the uh, whenever that particular report is printed it will always print in the landscape uh, irrespective of what is selected at your printer serves the purpose of lot of uh, column reports because obviously a column report is always better to be printed in a landscape rather than a portrait so there are different orientations across multiple forms so this can be done by using the attribute set always at form definition this is how set always variable name and the variable value so whenever this form is printed it goes into portrait mode whenever this form gets printed it automatically changes to the landscape mode as we pre-printed uh, specifies whether a pre-printed stationery or it's a plain paper print copies uh, again it takes a logical variable and it's applicable only for print action in a neat mode if the value is set to yes then the preview of the report is displayed otherwise the report is not displayed a variable sv print copies basically this particular variable helps uh, it's a number variable and uh, helps to indicate the number of copies to be printed of a report so print set and the variable name and the number of copies that you require in case of uh, some size invoices uh, there are more than one copy that you've been required you can preset those number of copies that you need in the sv preview uh, this is a logical variable and is applicable only for the print action with a neat mode format and if the value is a uh, set to yes then the uh, then preview of the report is displayed otherwise the report is displayed without the preview then the variables sv print to file and sv print file name access logical parameters uh, and if the print output should be saved in a file and then applicable it is only for dmp or the draft mode and sv print file name accepts the file name by using a function dollar dollar make export name to create an output file uh, you need to provide an output path and you know uh, suffixes with the extensions uh, based on the export format that you have provided then we have uh, events related to printing uh, event before print the uh, event before print is specific to the report object so it can be specified only within the report definition the event is triggered just before the uh, report is getting printed and just after the print action is being pressed the action is associated with an event and that action gets executed first up and then the report gets printed and there could be num a list of actions that uh, needs to be executed before the printing is started uh, for example uh, before the print starts you will first of all check which printer is there whether you have any printer or not whether it is uh, whether there is a printer connected if yes then which printer is connected uh, then if it is this printer then this should be my settings of my variables if it is this printer then this should be the settings of my variable for this report and if it is say if it is not this printer i want this particular printer to get set before this report gets printed and of sp and all those variables to get set before the report is printed you can go, I mean, those all things can be done before the report actually gets printed. You can set the variables. Uh, this is one example. On before print, yes, call a function and this function can just set, it could just set number of actions that you want. Then we have after print. So there's a event that can happen after the printing activity is completed. This can be specified at report form, part, and line. The event after print first prints the current interface and then executes the specified actions that have been associated to the event. This is how we have created our um, uh, index page. After the print is completed, it pushes on to some values to the list variable and that is how the index number is getting printed. 
So the topics that we have covered is the print actions, setting page breaks, printing image, printing related attributes, printing related functions, printing related variables, and printing related events. This, uh, this is a complete whole chapter that can suffice to just allow you to do n number of ways to do printing any kind of report at any given point of time with a with a just wink uh, with the change of the report the printer can be switched easily thank you for listening have a nice day for further queries please do contact our support desk at support.talideveloper at talisolutions.com